Hello and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerStore video series. In this video we will be showing how an administrator can set up remote protection by using async replication. The video will cover all required topics to set up remote replication between PowerStore systems. Before I will start with the video, I would like to give a short overview and cover supported configurations for replication. Then I want to give an introduction to configure remote systems and set up a protection policy with replication rule. Finally, before starting the video, we are talking about assigning the protection policy to a storage resource to establish the replication session. The native asynchronous replication is driven by policies configured on source system of the replication. Policies can contain snapshot rules for local data protection and replication rules for remote protection using asynchronous replication. Remote replication can be used to enlarge the footprint of data and set up data redundancy between remote sites. That might be required for compliance reasons. Once replication is set up, it utilizes a snapshot technology to create common base on both systems. The first replication is a full copy of the source storage resource. When the initial synchronization is finished, only snapshot differentials are replicated to reduce infrastructure utilization. Dell EMC PowerStore is using iSCSI protocol for data connection over the storage network and then management network to control the replication between remote systems. Fiber channel is not supported. Native asynchronous replication supports storage resources like volume, volume groups and send clones for replication. Dell EMC PowerStore systems are supporting following replication topologies for replication between PowerStore arrays regardless of model and type. One Direction is a replication of one or more individual storage resources from one PowerStore system to one other. Bidirectional is like the same as one directional but in both directions at the same time. Another supported topology is one to many, meaning replication of individual storage resources from a single system to different remote systems. Up to eight remote systems are supported. The last supported configuration is many to one. Storage resources of up to eight remote systems can be replicated into one single system to build individual storage resources on destination. Now let's talk about required configuration. Once clusters are configured after running initial configuration wizard with assigned storage IPs, all required network port configuration is already set and you are able to start with replication immediately. For management connection, the communication is via the management ports like it is used to access the PowerStore manager. Replication or data traffic is sent over storage network and shares bandwidth with the hosts. When the defaults are not changed, replication ports are mapped to system bond using port 0 and 1 on 4 port card for T-model or uplink port for PowerStore X models. To set up a remote host, the remote cluster IP address, admin user and password are required and can be used in both directions afterwards. Optionally, an optimized configuration for high latency WAN connection is available. The picture on the bottom right shows a minimal out-of-the-box network configuration between a PowerStore T and X model. As mentioned before, data protection on Dell EMC PowerStore systems is controlled by protection policies. Therefore, it is required to define a replication rule within a protection policy. A protection policy can hold no or up to four snapshot rules for local data protection and no or one replication rule for remote data protection. The replication rule defines remote host where the data should be replicated to, the recovery point objective for the replication and an alert threshold. A system, or also called cluster, schedules the RPO-based replication at 50% of the configured time. For example, a one-hour RPO will lead to scheduled replication every 30 minutes to ensure replication is within set RPO. The replication RPO can be set to fixed values in the range between 5 minutes and 24 hours. Once the created protection policy is assigned to a storage resource, the replication session is internally created and starts immediately with initial synchronization.
For the replication demo, I'm using two PowerStore clusters. The first cluster is a PowerStore Model T cluster with two appliances. It's called Boston. It has a bunch of hosts connected and volumes configured. We can find the volumes in the volume section. We're using storage and volumes to go into the volume overview. There are a bunch of volumes like engineering and marketing. We are choosing one of the marketing volumes to drill down into the volume details. Here we can find the host mappings where we also can see the mapped host boss Linux. The second system I'm using for the demo is a PowerStore X model system. It's called Hopkinton. In the PowerStore dashboard Hopkinton, we can see there are no volumes or volume groups configured. Let's see the network configuration before we start to set up remote replication. On a PowerStore X model, all network settings for remote protection should be set, but we can check anyway. The used IP addresses can be found in settings Network IPs storage page. On a PowerStore X model, the IceCrasy target IPs are used for replication as well. To check their used ports, we click on Hardware and select our appliance. In the Hardware Appliance section, we use the tab Ports. Underneath, we have two sections Ports and Virtual Ports. In the Virtual Ports tab, we can see the ports tagged for replication. We can identify the port with a green check mark. Now let's check the T model using hardware and checking one of the appliances. Again, in the port section, we will find the information about tagged ports for replication. Let's change the tagged port for replication from the default point zero to one of the FE ports. We select one of the FV ports on the AI module 0 and use the pull down menu more actions and select tag for replication. The change needs to be confirmed in the next dialog by clicking on tag port. The corresponding port on the second node is also changed afterwards. As we have checked network IP and port settings, we can start to create our first remote systems connection. For set, we are using protection remote systems. We can see there is currently no remote systems defined on the system. We are using the add button to open the dialog for a new remote system. Here we need to enter the remote management cluster IP address can change the network latency between the systems and need to give the username and password of the remote system. After clicking the Add button, we get a dialog to confirm the SSL certificate. Now the system is creating the remote system connection. I'm using here the refresh button to refresh the overview view. Now we can see the remote systems connection a successful management state and data connection. As next step, we need to set up the protection policy. For that, we are using protection, protection policies to go into the protection policies overview. There is no policy defined yet, so we use the create button to create a new protection policy. For a new protection policy, we just need to define the protection policy name. Afterwards, we can scroll down to the replication rules section of the dialog. Here, we are using again the create button to create a new replication rule. It requires a rule name. At next, we select the existing remote system definition. We leave the RPO and alert threshold setting as it is and click Create. The new rule appears in the Create Protection Policy window. We can finish creating the protection policy with the Create button here. The new policy is now ready for attaching it to existing or new storage resources. As example, 
I'm using volumes for that. I'm heading over to storage volumes into the volume overview window. Here I'm selecting a bunch of volumes marketing 001 to 004 and use more actions assign protection policy. In the dialog I select the replication policy and click apply. A message appears to confirm the protection policy for the volumes. In the volume overview we can see now the replication policy assigned to the volumes in the protection column. It's also possible to create new volumes with the protection policy already assigned. For that we click on create and enter the information in the create volumes dialog. Give a name, the quantity and size of the new volumes and select the volume protection policy in the pull down menu. After that we can see the new volumes in the volumes overview. For volume groups it's quite similar. We're going to storage volume groups to open the volume groups overview and select the configured volume group. We're using again some more actions pull down to assign the protection policy. We are selecting the replication policy and click apply. We need to confirm the assignment and the assigned protection policy is visible in the volume groups overview. The last section of the demonstration is about management and monitoring of replication sessions. To monitor the replication sessions, we are using protection replication to see the overview of our replication sessions. We can see the same on our destination system. Let's check protection replication here as well to reach out to the replication session overview. Let's have a look on the available replication session operations on the source side. I'm going to find the new created volume sales. Select the first one and see that the operations appears on the top. I'm using synchronize button to execute a synchronization between the RPO replication cycles. Before it starts we need to confirm the synchronization and see the change status right afterwards. I'm using the next volume to demonstrate the pause function. After it's confirmed and pausing the replication exact at the point where it is right now. When a replication session is paused, we can resume it. Only on the source system, we can use the blend failover button, which I demonstrate with the same volume. After clicking the blend failover button, a dialog appears. Here I'm asked if the volume should be reprotected after failover. I select that and confirm the time. Now an alert appears on the bottom right. It says that the replication session is failing over. Now going back to the replication session overview. Here let's select the same volume again and see that we have the failover button. Compared to the blend failover, the failover is not executing a final sync from source to destination. As it might be disruptive for the application, a dialog appears explaining the same. After the unblend failover is finished, it's possible to reprotect the volume again with the remote system. In production environments, it's recommended to snapshot the volume on the remote system first. Detailed information about the replication can be found in the session summary. You can reach the page by clicking on one of the replications in the replication overview. The example shows a session summary for one of our replications. It shows the replication rule, the role, remote system, last synchronization time and when a replication is currently ongoing, the estimated time when it's finished. That's the end of the demonstration. More information about PowerStone protection technologies 
arndell.com slash storage resources. User manuals and product documentation is available at dell.com slash powerstoredocs.